morning. Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. Oofa. All right. I just got done. A little workout. I did a. Get this right. There we go. I did 21 burpees, 21 kettlebell swings, 15 burpees, 15 KBSs, 9 and 9. And then I did 100 crunches um, slow. And then I went and dried off, put on a different shirt. And uh, I'm about to drink the warrior beverage. Mm. Water. Whew. I had this cup with leftover ice in my freezer and uh, I had the jug of water in the fridge. It's really cold. So, I've been working on my exercising, but I really have been abysmal on my diet. And I know better. I know all the things. Um, you know, whatever. For most of you, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, right? You know, as far as, yeah, I know I eat bad too or whatever, but I'm trying and uh, got a little goal in mind for myself. I'm a goal-oriented person and uh, so we're working on it. While I was working out today, I was thinking about when I went to Special Forces Selection which when I did it was a 21 day gut check and teamwork exercise. And uh, we had a phrase when I was in selection. And I don't remember who thought it up. I don't think cadre did, but it sounds like a cadre thing. But whatever, for those of us who passed selection, and then ended up going to the Special Forces Qualification Course and passing that. Uh, this phrase stuck with us and it became a thing that I heard frequently in Special Forces. It was, don't be late, don't be light, don't be last. And that's what I want to talk about today. Don't be late, don't be light, don't be last. And as it applied to selection, everything was done in an environment of ambiguity. They were actually selecting people who could thrive in ambiguity, with ambiguity. And so to that end, um, you never knew what was coming up next or when. Simple example. At a whiteboard where we all slept. A cadre would come in, could come in at two in the afternoon, he could come in at six o'clock at night, could come in while you were eating dinner, it'd be written on the board, formation 0645, 55 pounds. And that meant the next formation was at 645, you had to have a 55 pound rucksack packed. There were scales hanging up so we could weigh our own rucks to make sure. And 55 pounds was what they called dry weight. When, you, when they would spot check you, they'd have a scale hung up. They'd make you take your canteens and your food out of your rucksack and then hang it up. And it had to weigh, in this case, 55 pounds. Well, the next time you saw a sign, like, like the next day for a formation, it would say 522. 65 pounds. It'd be 522 in the morning with a 65 pound rock. You never knew what was coming next. And then there were a series of uh, 
land navigation events. And again, you never knew how far it was going to be or how far you were going to have to go. You never knew when your last point was until they told you to stop. And they never really told you to stop. They'd say, go over there and stand by. <laughs> Sometimes you'd go over there, sit down, start taking off a boot to change your sock, and they'd say, 43, come here. <laughs> and they'd send you off on another leg. Sometimes you'd sit there for 20 minutes and they'd call you over. Sometimes uh, you'd be sitting there and a truck would come and pick you up and take you away. I'll switch the camera for my camera shy wife. Um, and so all of the lanes that you had to run, um, land navigate on, there was a time limit. They didn't tell you what it was. So don't be late there meant don't be late to formation because if you were, you were gone. You just disappeared. You didn't make selection. If you missed formation, if you were two seconds late, to be early is to be on time. Or if you were late on your lanes, if you didn't make the time standard, you didn't make it. And again, you didn't know what the time standard was. Don't be light. Your rucksack. Uh, they would tell you what your rucksack had to weigh, and then they would spot check it. Some guys probably never got spot checked. Um, some guys probably got spot checked 20 times. You know, I don't know. I got spot checked a couple times. And the bottom line was, don't be light. If they told you to have X amount of pounds, you had to have X amount of pounds in your rucksack. Um, at one point we were doing something and there was a spot check. You had to go through it and hang your stuff on the scale. And uh, I saw one guy was late, a light and, uh, the cadre had sitting next to him, a pile of rocks. They were all about this big. They were all painted and they had a number painted on them. And the cadre would just pick up a rock uh, for the guy who was light and put it in his rucksack. Said, carry this for the rest of the day. And then he'd weigh his rucksack again and write it down with the rock in it so he couldn't get rid of stuff. And it was significantly heavier than at that point than what everybody else was carrying. Um, and I think if that happened to somebody twice, they were gone. So don't, get, don't be light and don't be last. You never wanted to be last. You know, if there's a race, again, they would do things like, all right, uh, tow up at the line. When we say go, uh, run down this route. If you're supposed to turn, it's on a dirt road. If you're supposed to turn anywhere, there'll be a cadre there directing you where to go. Uh, you'll be told when to stop. Do your best. <laughs> go. You have no idea if this is going to be a one mile run or a marathon. So you start running. They're judging you all along the way. And uh, they were fairly medium sized runs. I'd say five to ten mile runs. Um, you never knew. They don't tell you. Matter of fact, you don't find out when you get in the Special Forces because all that stuff is still classified. Unless you're a cadre there. Um, but you got to do your best, right? Well, your best at a one mile run is different than your best at a 10 mile run. Your pace is different. How do you know what to do? Do your best. But a good indicator is don't be last, right? You don't want to be the last guy. You don't want to be the last chunk of guys. Um, those guys didn't do well. They didn't make it. Culling the herd. Don't be late. Don't be light. Don't be last. Like I said, that translated over into special forces on the teams. And those are, those are words. My mouth isn't working right. I'm tired. Um, those are words that can guide you in life, especially in a life, uh, in a world without rule of law, Tiawaki, SHTF, you know, in a nebulous, ambiguous world uh, where consequences are dire, right? Um, don't be late. Don't be late to getting ready. Don't be late to preparing. Don't be late to getting out of the city. Don't be late to departing the city. Uh, don't be late to guard duty. Don't be late to locking your gate. Don't be late to putting away the last supplies. Don't be late. 
Because if you're late, you're gone. Don't be light. Don't be half-stepping. Don't be cheating. You know, don't be light was really don't be cheating, right? Or don't be uh, taking the due diligence to weigh your rucksack and make sure it weighed what you thought it did. Don't be light. Don't half-step. Don't say, yeah, I'll get to that later, and uh, I got enough gasoline stored away. I have enough water stored away. I have enough food stored away. I have enough garden planted. I have enough. I have enough. I'm, I'm good, man. And you end up being light. Because if you're light, the consequences are severe. Don't be last. You never want to be last. The last gazelle is the one the lions get. Don't be the last to leave. Don't be the last when people are running. It means you have to be fitter. You know, there's that joke. Um, two campers are sitting around a campfire and then out of the woods across the glade comes a big hungry grizzly bear. Stands up, starts huffing and puffing, wolf, wolf popping its jaws. And the next thing you know, it comes charging across the field and the guy pulls out his Swiss Army knife and opens it up. And his buddy goes, <laughs> you can't fight a grizzly bear with a Swiss Army knife. He says, I don't have to fight the grizzly bear. I just got to run away faster than you. And he cuts his hamstring and runs. Don't be last. It's a common theme in Army scuba school, which I did not attend. Um, but uh, <laughs> I've been to the school for a different course. Um, and so you see all the murals and every class in scuba school paints a mural on the wall. And a, a, a big theme in scuba school is your dive buddy. You never get within without arm's reach of your di dive buddy the whole time you're there. Um, and if you do, there are significant consequences that are paid. And a theme that you see in a lot of the murals is a, a great white shark is barreling down on two divers, a dive buddy. And the one dive buddy is stabbing his other buddy in the leg with a knife so he can fin away faster than his buddy and the shark will get his buddy. Because buddy's only half a word. Um, but yeah, don't be last. Never be last. And so you can take these, I do, my kids do, uh, who are adults now, um, and apply them in everyday settings. You know, if we're all uh, carrying firewood, don't be the guy carrying the little bit of firewood. Don't be light. Um, don't be late to the party. You know, we're having a barbecue and we're going to have a campfire. Don't be late to the party. Don't be light. Don't be light on the, on the food you bring to share. You know, everybody else is bringing homemade desserts and casseroles and stuff like that. You show up with a bag of chips. Don't be light, right? And uh, don't be last. When people are doing things, when people are volunteering, when people are moving, don't be last. These are all indicators of uh, your makeup as a person, as a human. And some of us notice. All right. I'll see you out there.